Okay, thanks a lot. So this is a joint work with Mohammad Taghi Hajiagai and Said Siddiqin. Both of them are in uh, University of Maryland. So as this, like the, this is the last session and the price of audience attention is growing, so I'm going to reduce my demand and no proof and try to keep it as simple as possible. So this is about procurement auctions. And as you see in lots of talk, it was all about buying, buying, optimizing revenue. This is about, uh, sorry, selling, selling, optimizing revenue. This is just about buying and optimizing the cost. So we have a task that requires multiple providers to cooperate. So each provider we can hire and it has a certain cost. We need to pay him his cost at least. And then providers are interchangeable and no provider is monopoly. Obviously, if there is a monopoly, then we cannot give him uh, anything that satisfies him. So it's essentially, you have to pay him infinity. So no provider is a required thing here. It has different applications, like connecting two cities as a government, then you need to hire some contractor to build your roads. If you are an advertiser, you want you have a special budget and you want to buy some advertising to meet your goal. And if you have a wireless service and you want to, again, hire some carriers, etc., there are different um, applications for this. So this is an example. Um, so suppose we want to connect uh, CTS to T. And these are all different options that we can have. So providers here are the edges. So it's E1 all the way to E7, and then feasible combinations are obviously all the paths that could connect S to T. For example, E1 and E6 is an example. So that is the question that we are going to uh, come with. So a no, no monopoly here means that no edge is in all the passes. So if there is an edge that is all in the passes, then we cannot buy him. So he's, he, he can demand infinity from us. So formal formulation. We have a, a set of providers, each performing that part of the tag. That's our ground set. Then we have a capital F, which is the collection of all the subsets that can do the task fully. And then no, poly, no monopoly means that for each provider, there exists at least one set, feasible set, that that provider is not in that set. And then obviously each provider has a cost C of E. So in our termination, this last example is just as simple as this. Um, so what the auction does, so each provider submits uh, the bid. Then the auctioneer receives all the bids. And then a winning set will be determined. And then we have to pay to all the providers. Now, we require that the auction should be truthful, meaning that the submitting to your actual cost is the best response for you. And then if you're, I'm sure that all of you are familiar, the payments are essentially the critical values of the uh, bidders or the uh, maximum bid that the winners can still win. So here in this example, suppose C1 is, uh, is less than C2. So if C1 is less than C2, then the critical value is just C2, meaning that as far as this guy, cost uh, is C2, then he wins. So we have to pay him C2. Otherwise, uh, it's not incentive compatible, all simple. So now the question is, if you give me a mechanism, how I can uh, evaluate if the mechanism is performing well or not? So the, uh, the measure is obviously the sum of uh, summation of payments. Uh, this is uh, that we, we are going to measure. And then what is the benchmark? So the obvious thing that comes to our mind is that how about the minimum subset uh, uh, with the minimum subset with the lowest cost? And then it turns out easily that it is not possible. So it's the competitive ratio goes to infinity. You cannot achieve that. So we need to have a relaxed benchmark, OK? And then like most of my talk would be about this like relaxed benchmark. But I want to point out before going to benchmark is that if you give, give us a good benchmark, then you can define the frugality ratio of a mechanism, which is essentially 
how bad your mechanism is compared to your benchmark. P here is the benchmark. So in formal uh, definition, it is the supremum over the, all the costs, the total payment of your mechanism over that benchmark. Okay? And then you can generally define the frugality of set system, which is how bad the, the best mechanism can perform. And then you can define the competitiveness of your mechanism comparing to the best mechanism. Okay? So it's been a while, uh, it's been a, a group of papers that have been evolving this benchmark. Uh, and then uh, we're going to review those. So first uh, was it started with Aaron Archer and Eva Tardosh. They, they defined that, okay, the second cheapest shortest pass is our uh, benchmark, which is completely disjoint from the shortest pass. Then Anna Colleen and David Kempe came and said these, these are, there are different uh, bad properties about this benchmark. It's probably not very desirable. For example, if you look at here, the shortest pass, if you take the shortest pass out, then there is no connecting pass between do, these two, and then the benchmark goes undefined. So this is the, that Anna Colleen and David Kempe noted that. And then they defined that instead of that, what about we look at the cheapest Nash equilibrium of the first price auction? And essentially, the cheapest Nash equilibrium you can write as a LP. Here, um, you minimize means that you, you're finding the cheapest Nash equilibrium. And then you can easily check. This essentially says that uh, your, there, there is no other set that is better for the buyer. And then this, this, the rest are. Uh, should be very clear. This star here means that there is actually one more caveat here that for each edge, for each provider, you need to have like another blocking set, but that's not that important here. Then Edith and uh, Leslie and Paul Goldberg, uh, they said, okay, this is still not as good. There are different uh, bad properties again, and roughly, this is again, the, the, the price of the cheapest Nash equilibrium is dependent on which uh, subset of providers you select. And then they, they said, okay, maybe we should look at the most expensive Nash equilibrium. If, so this just, you replace this with max, and then that stars goes away, and then it's better, so you're getting closer. So now here note that, uh, again, we have the same uh, constraint that, that this is the best for the, uh, for the buyer, but that one still was not as good. So they defined this uh, new benchmark, which is actually much better. And that is essentially, they defined to this to price of cooperation. So note here that um, here we don't require that you have to pay each provider his cost. So, so what does it mean? It means that now all the, all the providers are cooperating together so that they get the maximum out of the, uh, the buyer. So they can, however they want, cooperate. And then this LP essentially tells that that is uh, how, how much they can uh, get uh, from the buyer. Okay? So this was um, the state of the art before our auction, our, our proposal. So namely, um, so we, we, we change it, still say that, okay, it's not enough, and you will see why it is not enough in the rest of the talk, that not only we need to take this, but so here we fix set S like lexicogra lexicographically or, or arbitrarily, but here we say that actually we should take the maximum set S and then uh, and then define our, our benchmark towards that. So, so, um, so this, this like fixing a set turns out to be very problematic and then we will see why. But when, when, we, when, we, do, when we take the maximum, this, those problems go away. Namely, now our benchmark is monotone, meaning that if a, a cost vector C1 is less than C2, then the, the, the value of the benchmark is actually less. So if, if someone increases the cost, then the expectation is that you need to pay more, right? 
So this now holds with this new definition. And also, we have this new definition. This, this definition has been around by, by, by the previous works. And now, we will also uh, note that uh, this, this new definition is actually smooth as well. So what smoothness means is that if the cost vectors are relatively close, then the difference between the benchmark values are also close. So if you have n providers and someone increases his cost to epsilon, we don't want that benchmark suddenly jumps a lot. So it would be at most n times epsilon, right? So that was about the benchmark. Now, uh, we, we try to apply this benchmark to different uh, frugal mechanism, uh, namely this vertex cover option that was studied before by the literature. So in vertex cover, we have a ground set of nodes, and then we want to select some subset of nodes so that each edge has at least one node uh, from the selected nodes. Okay, so very simple vertex cover auction. So we are actually going to not uh, uh, propose a new mechanism. We analyzed the mechanism of uh, David Kemper, Mahir Salek, and Christopher Moore. We showed that their analysis for the previous benchmark actually is not correct, and we showed that this their their mechanism, the same mechanism, would work for our uh, benchmark. And we show the same competitive, uh, uh, the, the constant competitive ratio of four for this mechanism. So these are their, their work. So I'm going to give you some, some intuition about how, how uh, their mechanism work and how the analysis work in this case. So the idea one here is that we run a weighted VCG. So we assign to each node a weight and then the, the VCG selects the subset of these nodes where the weighted cost is minimized, right? So um, here, for example, you, you see intuitively that node D is actually very important, right? So it's better to select node D than node G because if you select D, then you are much better off. So this weight intuitively have to be more, uh, sorry, less for, for, the, for the nodes that are more important and less for the nodes that are less important so that VCG select them. This is the first idea. Second idea is that how actually we should assign this weight. Now this, that, that the idea is that, okay, if you're comparing against that benchmark, you need to use that benchmark for the weights. So what you would say, say, okay, I assign weight one, a uh, cost one to node D and all the other costs are zero, and then how the VCG uh, uh, runs, and, uh, and how the, the, and we calculate our benchmark. So this value essentially tells the externality that this node occurs if you don't select that node and want it to cover its edges from the other, uh, by the other nodes. So this is the second uh, idea. Now, now we are getting closer to, to how the final mechanism so idea three is that now that we have, uh, we have kind of a hint about the weights, when we want to analyze our mechanism, we essentially want to charge the payment that we pay to D to its neighbors, right? So that is how if, 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 uh, if you want to bound the, 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 the total amount of payment, then you need to charge whatever you pay to these neighbors. So so this, this is the idea. So what we do, um, we, we, we try to charge the payment. Now, the, the idea is that um, if you consider all the nodes, if they happen to be selected, then we need to charge its cost to its neighbors, right? And then we want uh, for, for each node the, that the extra amount that uh, we pay to him, that is charged to its neighbor, across all the nodes to be the same. So this is, um, this is essentially saying that if this adjacency vector, uh, vector of G, where the weights are some weights that we are going to specify multiplied by V, then that means that this is essentially all the neighbors of the V are some factors away from the actual weight that we had. So now all of you know this uh, equality this is essentially the eigenvectors of, of adjacency vector G. So 
it, the, the reds turn out to be one over this uh, benchmark uh, for, for all the nodes. And then you run the auction. Then it turns out that, that, the, uh, the, that you, you can bound the, um, uh, the, the extra payment that mechanism does. So this was all about the proof. I hope that you, you get a good intuition from it. It's the work of uh, David Kemper, Mahir Saleh, and Christopher Moore. We also studied another um, example. This is the uh, knapsack auction. So here we have some knapsack with size 10. Each item has a volume, and we want to have at least 10. This is again, the, the online advertising setting uses this. Um, now each, each item has a volume and a cost. Now we want to fill the knapsack with, with the minimum cost. So every element, um, same, same idea. We assign to each element a uh, weight one over its volume. And then this, this is an example to kind of show how we upper bound the, 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 the payments. Again, we, we charge the critical values to the replacing item. So if you drop one item from the knapsack and you want to replace with others, you need to charge the, the extra payment to the other items. And it, it turns out that, uh, that this, this bound is at most uh, square root of 2 times v max, where v max is the maximum volume. And then to lower bound the frugal artillery ratio, this is just an example that I put so that you get the idea how, how this, this lower bounding works. So lower bounding usually, we give an example. So now we have, uh, we have v, so we assume that the size of the knapsack is v max, meaning that uh, we want to fill at least v max. And then we have, V max items, each of them has volume one. And then we have one, uh, one item, his um, volume is V max, meaning that you can either select this guy or all the other guys. And then we assign the cost to be a square root of V max with this guy and one for the other. Now, the mechanism has two options. Either it selects V max, where we change the cost of this guy to zero but because the mechanism is truthful, he has to st still select that guy, and by the truthfulness, he has to pay at least square root of v max. And then if the mechanism selects not select the v max, then it's essentially with, without loss of generality, we can change him, change that one to any other, uh, any other of the volume one guys, and then we change that to this, again, by the incentive compatibility, the mechanism how to select all these other guys and then how to pay them at least one. So now we see that mechanism is at least paying uh, square root of Vmax more than the benchmark. So in summary, um, we had a new benchmark uh, for the frugal auctions, uh, for procure procurement auctions. And then we correct the analysis of the David Kemper, Mahir Salek, and more. And then we show that the same mechanism has a uh, competitive ratio four to actually randomize mechanism even. And then we have a knapsack option for the upper bound of two square root of, square root of two times max and then lower bound of V max. And uh, that's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>